This video, I coded it so you can build Geometry Dash levels directly from Google Sheets and then upload them to the servers. All the programming and layout building was done from the ground up over the course of three live streams, and despite running into major issues with uploading, I managed to pull it off in the end. This is the story of how I turned an ordinary spreadsheet into the GD editor, and what crazy bugs and glitches got in the way. Also, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribed, so if you end up liking this video, consider unsubscribing. It's free, and you could always subscribe in the future. With that being said, enjoy the stream highlights. So I've been coding a program, as you know, I, I like to code. And I've been working on a program that lets you uh, make and upload Geometry Dash levels through Google Sheets. Basically, as you can see here, it's, it's a spreadsheet. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. I have a whole palette of GD objects here. So first thing I did was I, I grabbed all of the objects in the game. Well, all of like the 1.0 objects. So we got uh, like the default block, these blocks, and all the rotations as well. And also the ball portal, even though it's not technically 1.0, neither is this block right here. So all of these are actually URLs to images. And this number here is the object ID in Geometry Dash. This block is 1, this portal is 11, and the number after that is the degrees that it's rotated. As you can see here, the URL for this image is gdcolon.com slash object slash 20. And if we go to that URL, you're gonna see that's exactly what you expect. I can change object to like uh, one and we get the default block. Very straightforward. So I have this script here. I, I started on the script, it's very basic. And essentially what the script does is it goes through every single square in the spreadsheet and it looks for the squares which has an image. So if this cell in the spreadsheet has a picture, it's gonna look at the image and say, Okay, so this is object 40, and it's rotated 180 degrees, because that's what's in the URL for the picture. And then it's going to know that at Y46 XO, uh, it should place an object there. Thing is, once we know where all the objects should be placed, we can run the script that I wrote. So you would go GD, and then generate level. And then once you generate the level in this data tab, it's going to give you the code for the geometry dash level. This is what a geometry dash level looks like when it's pure code. So I would take this code, I'd put it in this text file, which is over here. I'd paste it in, and then I'll run level.bat, and it's going to take a moment to like decode it and everything. So what it just did there was it decoded my save file, then it slid that level, that, that level code into it. So now if we open geometry dash, You'll notice there's a level called Spreadsheet, and if we open up this level, bada bing bada boom, it's, uh, it's exactly what we made here. But right off the bat, you're going to notice some issues. Mainly that it is in the totally wrong spot, and that lots of things are just totally incorrect. For example, these, these blocks are not positioned correctly at all. So the goal of this livestream is to fix this program as much as possible and try to get it so it's actually functional. First thing I need to do is actually fix the position of the level. Every grid space in Geometry Dash is 30 units, which means that if you move an object 15 units, it's gonna be halfway through two grid spaces. This button, this left button, moves it two units. So we wanna figure out what the coordinates of this block right here is. For example, we know that this spike over here, the coordinates of this spike is probably like, it would be 165 and 1905. And we want to get the exact X and Y coordinates of this block right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place a block right here. This is going to be the only, actually no, I can't use that block because it's, this is going to be the only object in the entire level. And then, uh, grab it while you can because I'm uploading this to the GD servers. Unfortunately, you're too late because now it is deleted. Did anyone get a ch <laughs> Oh my god! Y'all are fast! Alright, so it's deleted now. Or is it? While that was happening, I took the time to open it up in GD Browser. And if I open it up in GD Browser, I can grab the level data from this level, which right here, this string contains exactly what I want. So we know that the position of that block right there is 15 comma 15. So now that we know it's 15 15, we can plug those numbers into our thing that generates geometry dash levels for us. Now we're gonna have to do a little bit of math here because we wanna get this block in exactly the correct position. 
I don't know, this seems like guess and check. My brain's too fried to do proper math right now. Uh... Okay, the X position was completely off. So if the column is zero, which would be this, then we would just have to do Y position is equal to 15 plus C times 30. Exactly the same. I'm, I'm an idiot. Yeah, so that's 15, 15, which means we got it, which means that if we place an object at the very beginning of the level, how about like a triple spike? Let's have a look, pray. Look at that, look at that. Very start of the level. That took way too long. It was a super simple formula that should not have taken so long to do. Okay, so now the next thing we have to work on is the offsets of each object. And this one's gonna be a little bit of a hassle. Basically, if an object isn't a full block, then it's not going to be positioned correctly in the editor. For example, if I place those directly in their coordinates, these are they all appear in the wrong spot. For example, since this pad is technically placed in the very middle, that's where it's going to be in the editor. So, small spike is has an ID of 39, and we have to figure out how many blocks it has to be moved to have it in the correct position. Each time I press this button, it moves down two units, so... Let's try to get this exactly into place. Two, four, six, eight. I would say eight and a half. So we know that 39 is 8.5. Strap tight, because we have to do this for all of them. Very fun stream. Uh, oh yeah, I have the Celeste soundtrack open. Yoink. So let's place the actual object down, which is actually a different version, because this one turns green when you select it, and this one doesn't. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 12. 44 and 4x and 4y. All right, we got all the values. Nice. So now we have to plug in these values whenever one of those objects is placed. So basically, if this object is being placed, then move it by that many tiles. And we also have to keep, take rotation into mind as well. I need a new variable name that has something to do with offset but isn't the word offset. I'm just gonna call it off. Oh wait, no, we can do this. We can do let off equals, if it's not an array, then it would be a zero offset. Otherwise, offset. But boom, that, that's a much better way of doing it. But keep in mind, those are the offsets for if the object is rotated right side up, and we have to take account if it's not rotated. Let me just casually Google a switch statement to make sure I have the syntax correctly, yeah. Coding is not about how to write a switch statement, it's about when to write a switch statement. If Google solves it, why bother learning? So if we rotate it 90 degrees, then up is gonna become right. So instead of moving it up, we have to move it. We would just swap zero and one. So if all of these are in the correct position, then we have successfully W'd. Uh, we were close. I think we were close. <laughs> you know. So these need to, the X and Y's here need to be the other way around. So if it's sideways, uh, add the X. Subtract the- wait, no, X offsets don't matter there. So this time around, everything should be exactly in position. Pray. <gasps> okay, these are still off by one entire block. And everything except right side up is correct. Why would that be? Oh wait, I know! Because if it has zero rotation, then it doesn't have- yeah, because there's no such thing as zero rotation. The rotation is just undefined if it's not one of these. I'm going to try to get background triggers working as well, where you can set the color with the paint bucket tool. I'm assuming everyone is just totally confused by this and just trying to pretend that they understand what's going on. Whatever, that's the beauty of a coding stream. All right, shove these objects in. See what happens. No, no, no. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Am I gonna have to hard code something for those long spikes? Cause uh, 
I want them to always move right, regardless of the rotation. I know what I'll do. So for 18 and 19, we're gonna add another property. This should be the one, guys. Almost perfect. Almost perfect. Why is that being- they're all off by- I'm gonna try moving it by 15 instead of 30. Plus- oh it- oh my god no! Array start at- Array start at zero! <laughs> the stupid arrays start at zero. Oh my god, I'm brain dead. Good, good, good. Somehow still wrong, somehow still wrong. Why is it still wrong? Type script sucks. Type script sucks. Type script sucks. So if it's upside down, we're also gonna add the additional off two or zero. And if it's 270, then the X position is gonna subtract that much. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So the Y position should be nudged by two and the X position should be nudged by three. If I am not an idiot, this should be it. This should be it. Go, go, wrong, wrong. These are both, it's off by two now. Okay, this one is correct. This one is correct. The ones that are broken are 19 and 18. Let's just try setting those to zero and working from there. So this one needs to be moved by three, and this one needs to be moved by two. So we were on the right track here. 60, 90, congratulations, we've just officially finished the code for it. I never want to do that again. That sucked. Just pause this for a second. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Yeah, I had them mixed around. We got my boy. Let's go! Oh god, fur it got in my mouth. Go away, fur it. Let's go! Let's freaking go! Since I have to go soon, I think we'll take the time to code background triggers. Let's start by making like a very basic level. Nothing too insane. I, I can't play test in the editor, just like, like 1.0 of Geometry Dash. Nothing special. So we'll start with that. Why not? The goal is that when we pass this spot, the background is gonna change too. Give me a background color, give me a background color. We're gonna go with red, cause red is sus. And so by setting the background color to red, that's gonna be the color that the background trigger is gonna switch to. So first thing we have to do is figure out the background color that's on the spreadsheet. The object ID is equal to 29. In other words, if it's a background trigger, let BG color equal BG's row column logger.log BG color. This should log the background color. Let's run it. Color? Yeah, I know it's a color. What color? Oh, you have to do as RGB color. Ugh. Just give me the stupid RGB. So BG color dot R, BG color dot B. No, I mean G. I'm stupid. Null, null, and null. Your face. You are actually stupid. Dot get blue. Dot get green. Dot get red. Google, what is your problem? There we go, we got the colors we want. Anyways, here's the deal. This background trigger you're seeing over here is not actually an ordinary background trigger. Because in update 2.0, Background triggers were changed to be part of the color trigger, but we want the we want the old background trigger because that's what object 29 is So if we go to object IDs, which is the level that I made and we go to 29 Lo and behold it is the old background trigger, which we're gonna store as a custom object Because even if you can see the background trigger icon over here on this tab It is now the color trigger in order to fully grasp how this background trigger works, 
We are going to place it down in the editor. Set the background to red with a fade time of 0.5. Guess what? We're uploading that to the GD servers. Look at that. It's a truly beautiful level. Did you download it? Too bad. It's gone now. So, now that we have this, we can go to GD Browser and see exactly what makes this background trigger tick. And by that, I mean all the code for the said background trigger is... Right here. We don't need 1, 2, or 3, because that's position. 64, 1. 67, 1. 36, 1. Now we're going to go to Object Properties. And figure out what all of these correspond to so we know what we do and don't need. 7 is the red value. 8 is the green value. 9 is the blue value. Uh, 10 is the duration, which should be 0.5. Until we find a way to change that. 35 is opacity. 1. And 23 is the color channel which should always be 1,000, because 1,000 is actually the background color channel. We put all that hecking stuff together, and we are left with, comma, 7 is equal to bgcolor.getred, comma, 8 is equal to bgcolor.getgreen, comma, 9 is equal to bgcolor.getblue. This is how you write a geometry-level string. Uh, these are functions, because your face. 10 is equal to fade time, which is 0 0.5. And then, uh, 35 is always 1, and 23 is always 1,000. What we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this. We're gonna run the code. Go, 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 go. Show it to me. Uh... Literally every part of that could not g have gone worse. Oh, it's because why is there a semicolon there? So 1 is 29. This is good. Oh, because there's a, there's a semicolon after there, which n negates all the other values. Yeah, that, that'll do it. I, just a little oopsie. Do -do -do. Yes! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! We got a background trigger! Let's go! Screw it, let's add more, let's add more. Uh, how about, uh... So after that jump, it's gonna change to, uh... Hot pink. Then at the hot pink part, you're gonna jump up here, in which it's gonna change to, uh, purple guy hex code. While you're doing the triple spike, uh, the background is gonna fade to... black, I don't know. And then after the triple spike, it's gonna change to green. Do you guys think it's gonna work? I'm confident, boys. I'm confident. Let's try it. Object is not a type of RGB color. Why is it a color and not an RGB color? Is it this one? What if I change it to a normal black? That isn't theme black. It errored because I chose this shade of black instead of that shade of black. They're both the exact same shade of black! Good. Good. <gasps> Purple guy! Isn't that just amazing? I mean, we have to find a way to do fade time and stuff, but... It's about the concept. Everything is exactly in place. And also, it's even the old half slab that can't be colored because the new one sucks. Uh, we'll continue this in the future. I'll try to give a recap of everything I did for the people that weren't there. I know this was a more boring stream because, like... Truth be told, it was just coding. I do know it can be really dry and boring, especially when you keep guessing checking until something works. Uh, that's about it for this stream. Next stream, we're going to make a level, and we're also going to make it uploadable to the GD servers, which is pretty damn hype, if I do say so myself. Uh, wait, I, I, I gotta go pick up Furret. Yo, Furret, you good?